Okay. Yeah, we, we start by playing. Let's play. You're good with technical stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tapecast. Today I have with me Anurag Kashyap, a filmmaker and agent provocateur. <laughs> Joining him is Kalki Kekla, an actor, activist and writer. Now, we've had acquaintances, friends and even childhood friends on the show. But this is the very first time we've had former partners in the house. And I think this is going to be an invigorating session. Anurag, why don't you pick the first question for Kalki? I'm here to take you on a journey with two minds, unlike any other. There is no limit to their creativity. They are the rule breakers, the norm makers. Are you curious to know how they think? So am I. Let's find out what makes them go beyond. Identity. Oh God. Long live identity crisis. How do you balance the artist in you with the brand in you? The celebrity who pushes out fashion, products and red carpets. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. You don't know? I, I don't think you're even aware of the brand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the other day I was thinking like I was walking from like uh, a friend's place in Marine Drive to NCPA and like on the way like Taxi driver is going, Kalki! Nimish was with me, you know, he's a designer. He was like, you don't realize that you're famous. I'm like, no, I do. I'm like, I know people want selfies and all. And he's like, but they think that you like have a Mercedes and three cars and stuff, you know, like not that I have a Swift and, you know, live in Mahada and stuff. So it is it is a strange word, like, but you also have the same issue. Yeah. Like, you know, when I met you, you had rickshaw. Rickshaw drives, rickshaw. didn't have car. Rent, living in a rented house. Yeah. But how do you balance you, it? How do you balance it is like, as as you get more and more busy, I have to constantly remind myself to start back at the beginning. It's it's the same thing as buying more products. It's like suddenly you you, you feel like you need these other things which you don't need. And it's the same with, with doing ads and doing all this other work. You know, like even your today, your social media, your Instagram, and suddenly you're doing all these other things. And you're like, wait a minute, what about Riyaz, rehearsal, warming up my voice, going back to like what I used to do, why I'm acting, you know? So it's like just taking all of those things away, uh, switching off my phone. I've started doing this a lot. And then just with an, you know, with an empty slate starting to work. When, sure. you, when, you, when you react as an artist. Hmm. You also, are you also aware of me as a brand and would I be so reactive, not reactive? Oh, yeah. So this I have become like careful about because I think I, like I've always been very candid, right? I feel, I've said what I think. Uh, but I also realized that anything can be taken out of context yeah. uh, and put out there, right? So what I've started doing is letting my work speak for itself. Yeah. Like if I make something which comes from, you know, a personal experience or something, then you're putting out a work which then people can take home, listen to or watch and then react to personally in their own way without the pressure of being right or being wrong. Again, of course, you have to think of it from a practical point of view. Yeah, there's money, there's, there's a house, there's family to look after, all of those things. But apart from that, I don't really, my, my ambition is not to have three houses and two big cars and I have everything I need already in terms of material things, more than enough I have. So now it's, uh, it's about choosing and wanting to do things better and not being mediocre, which is hard, no? Don't you feel, I want to ask you, how do you manage to not be mediocre? I have been mediocre so many times. But how do you manage to keep fighting it? Because as a director, I feel you have to be so much in charge and at the same time you have to delegate trust to everyone. It comes with the job. Somewhere you have to just pick everyone up and push them to do their best. And how do you do it for yourself? Me? Uh, I, uh, I wish I was like Anil Kapoor who could look into the mirror and say I'm the best. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've stopped trying to evaluate myself whether I'm mediocre or good or better or 
best or very bad mm. that has helped me a lot i just now just two things i realized long time back we had a lot to say and we exhaust what we have to say on social network mm. so i have started to keep off social networks i have a lot to say within mm. and it somehow finds my way to work okay now i can choose for him um work from the situation theater to thanks Well, Thanks. <laughs> Anurag, you've gone through so much with so many of your films. Your first film, Punch, never released. Black Friday was stalled for years. I remember reading that you were heading to the premiere in a new suit when you got a call saying that the film had been stalled yet again. You said that you went back into the room and didn't come out for three whole months. But eventually, how did you learn, in the words of Carrie Fisher? to take your broken heart and make it into art i, I don't think i've known any other way <laughs> i just put everything into my film i think all my angst everything just finds its way into my work yeah i've been like that i think since i was born <laughs> the only thing i learned from punch and black friday is to stop waiting that whole thing of wanting to show to people that See what a filmmaker I am, and what I have to say. And that need went away with March never releasing and Black Friday and forever being in the loop. Mm. I think now when I finish a film, I just deliver it and I start on my next, and I find fresh things to say. Yeah. But the problem comes is around release time when there are interviews and people ask you questions. Yeah, and they'll I prod you and that. they'll provoke you mm. and they'll provoke you and then you mm. say it again. And before the film comes out, you have a headline. My last interview uh, just now at Ify was uh, they asked me, uh, so how did you manage after divorcing Anurag? Like how how are you managing like as a single person? Like it's like wow, what what a what a strange you know. But that's what. What a crazy thing to think a person can live like after divorce without like you know. I think when dying or or. or go, going into a hole in shame <laughs> you know, all these people who ask this question i think that when they talk about misogyny they should begin by admitting their misogynists themselves the question itself yeah like if you keep asking those the wrong questions you're going to keep perpetuating that no yeah. the other question is always cat fight me and richa because we did a film together cat fight such a like 90s question you know like come on guys we're so over that now nobody has cat fights anymore it takes time to grow up <laughs> Yeah. I think question should come after the work comes out. Yeah, exactly. Then you can It makes more sense. It. Yeah. Next. Okay. I choose for you untitled. Ooh. I have a surprise for you. What do you consider your biggest personal victory? <laughs> That I can live with myself. Yeah, I think at the end of the day we're born alone, we die alone. we better be comfortable with ourselves and who we are no so, you had lots of personal victories yeah but this is my biggest i think all my life i've actually um emotionally uh, been very uh, vulnerable and i've always seeked out um support uh in like you know a, a strong man <laughs> <laughs> and uh, or or some or someone but i i tend to have this thing of attachment and it's very strong and i think that the last few years for me has really been about finding that support in myself and not being dependent on one other person or two other people you know like yes using the support system around me my friends my family and uh you know people who love me but not putting all your you know all your energy i think i think that 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 was something that i used to do a lot so i think for me uh that's something that has been wonderful i actually enjoy coming back to my own space coming back to my alone time every once in a while when things get too much it's like really important for me and that that has been yeah it also important. shows in a lot of your poetry and your work and yeah 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 <laughs> Done. Easy. Okay. Anurag Piyush Mishra has said that you're married to cinema. He said that Vishal Bharadwaj is an organized person, but you're a self-destructive person. Until you destroy yourself, you can't create something. 
Is this true and what does it mean? <laughs> oh, great. Ah. <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> what can I say? No, I, I don't know if I can... I don't agree with him. You don't have no. to destroy yourself. I think that... What do you think, of course? Paul? I don't know. I, I, me and Piyush, we have had lots of discussions and arguments about things and he, he actually believes it. Hmm. But I don't think so. I, I think everything I, I go through or I grapple with, I put it in my movie. Yeah. That, I, that I often do. My films that change true. midway through shooting if I'm going through a life change. That, that's, that's very true. And ending of Devdi changed yeah. while we were shooting. Yeah. When the script was not written as a happy ending movie. Vikram was the most upset. Vikram Motwani was like, you have destroyed the film. <laughs> but then also, do you feel that you need to create that? It happens stuff? organically. I think it happens organically. I don't... Like think you, I, in your own life, do you feel like if you don't have drama, you create it? No, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't create drama. But many a times I, I really feel that somehow I, I just, my way of dealing with things is put it in the movie. Like no smoking was my way of dealing with all the bans and censorship. I just put it all out there. Mm. I camouflage it, sometimes I don't camouflage it. Mm. But uh, I don't think I destroy myself to create. Yes, I'm not organized at all. I don't I'm, think you destroy yourself to create, but I do think... I thrive in chaos. No, I, uh, no, I mean you're very... You're, you're sorted when you're on a film set. You yeah, know exactly absolutely. what you're doing. You, yeah, it's chaotic, and but you are able to like really like... Yeah, I manage chaos very well. Beautifully. And you have a great sense of spontaneity and you just make things happen. Even when they're going wrong, you t use it for the best of, of the scene and stuff. But I'm wondering if you... <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 see. <laughs> um, if that that sense of uh, belonging that you feel on a film set uh, when you come back to life or reality you still live in your head and how much like I live a lot in my head I'm more at home on the film set at the festivals right in the movie world right yeah so it's like that has become your reality and that has that often kind of clashes with my re actual reality that's the conflict that i get into a lot but when i'm traveling for the festivals i'm watching going from movies to movies and somehow kind of that literally becomes my safe place hmm. now i think when 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 Piyush or me or any of our of those who love you have like said statements like he destroys himself. It's not that you want to destroy yourself, but you live for that reality and for that world. And so we feel like we're just characters in your film. <laughs> that was her. That, that's that's the drama. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, I think that's my way of surviving. Mm. My way of my yeah. way of dealing with things is it's your it's like how I need that aloneness with myself. So it's your yeah. My way of surviving is that because when I'm dealing with things, I put somehow somehow find my way into it. When everything is going fine, I uh, yeah. That's when I don't know what to do. <laughs> that's when I really don't know what to do. When everything is just according to the script. And like a lot of my friends, actually all of my friends, they tell me you should not be given budgets to make movies. Because when I am given budgets to make movies and I'm given everything, don't do. I don't know what to do with it. When I'm given nothing, then I actually create. It's your turn. You want to tell me what to pick or should I pick? You pick. I'm not telling you anything anymore. I pick creativity. Creativity. What exactly is your creative process? Are you an instinctive actor or do you prefer to come well prepared? When do you find the time to write? Uh, there's a lot more to your creativity than writing and acting. I know you as a charcoal artist, uh, you do sketching, uh, you do so many more things, juggling, <laughs> you've been clowning. <laughs> Yay, one skill. Huh. You do so much. I, I used a lot of those little, little things on Dave D. Yeah. Yeah. The origami. Yeah. Yeah, I can't keep still for very long. I, yeah. I need to be doing something or the other. I constantly remember doing Margarita with a straw that. You're constantly on a wheelchair, I, I had to carry you down and yeah, carry you up. I prefer doing... Because she preferred... 
I prefer doing that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, by the way, for carrying me to the loo, <laughs> carrying me to the bed. I remember you refused to get up. You said, pick me up. I can't walk. <laughs> Such a good life. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I like to prep. I love to get into it and research it. I think I'm a geek like that. I love reading books and finding yeah. out about a character. I remember another preparation that you did, used to do then. What was which was, I think, much more harder than Margarita with the straw. Right. That, this is a Diwani dance. <laughs> <laughs> that you so just bad. could not get right. What was that moment? Something. Yeah, some... some Patmi's dil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not my strength, for sure. And then, what was the second part of the question? What motivates you to write? How oh, do you find time to write? I don't find time to write. I find it the most difficult. Unemployment motivates me to write. Like there's nothing else. But you're very articulate about things when you write I, poetry. I, there's no inspiration like a deadline. So what I do is I commit to something. Like last month there was a uh, spoken word festival in Bombay. So I committed to it. They advertised it. They put my name out. They said I'm doing it. I hadn't got anything down till like 15 days before the show. And I was damn stressed. I was like, I, I, can ne I can never write again. I have no talents and all that was going on. And then it came at the last minute, this piece on fairy tales. So I don't think I am a disciplined writer. I'm not a, I, ca I don't call myself a writer because I don't think I do it as a daily exercise. But I do love it and I feel the only way for me to do it is to push myself. Put myself in a situation where I have to write. You have to your turn. Do not play. Do not play. <gasps> Do not play with my heart. Anurag, have the two failed marriages led you to become a better man? <laughs> simple, uh, simple questions are the best. <laughs> I don't think I was a bad man. <laughs> well, I've learned so much more. <laughs> marriage is a lot of commitment. And I think marriage is... You have to make an effort to make it work. I wish everything was organic, that you know, two people come together and it works out. But yeah, it's a lot of work. It's also scary. <laughs> I don't know. What is the question? I have the two marriages, failed marriages, that helped you become a better person. I think I've become, yes, I've become more understanding, more tolerant, more... I take and give more space. I know that when you're dealing with a whole lot of things outside, you don't have to bring it home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shubhra's <Yeah>. lucky then. <laughs> no, but yeah. But everyone, I think, has to learn from every failed yeah. thing in life, yeah? I no, you, you keep, yeah, definitely you learn from every failure. We are here to learn and evolve, no? Yeah. So. I have understood the importance of taking holidays. Mm. So much more. You look also healthier and happier than yeah, yeah. I am. before. <laughs> <laughs> importance of exercising, importance to stay healthy, yeah. eat right. Yeah. Everything doesn't have to be cinema. Hmm. Everything is still cinema, but it's like I don't sleep with it in the bed anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm a better person. I'm a more livable person. I'm like. You think? Yeah, I think you were always a great person. I think you have a heart of gold. But maybe like, yeah, you've, I don't know actually. I had my problems. Uh, no, I, I think, I, I, I know I had my problem. I was lazy. I was very lazy. I, I would come home and just sleep. <laughs> I think outside of cinema, I didn't know how to do conversations. Which I'm like getting better at probably. I of, think you were quite talkative. In the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning, yeah, because I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question because... <laughs> You've answered it, I think. Huh? You've answered yeah, yeah. it. Okay. This is the end. I only friend. Kalki, Anurag, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. You're two people who stand to make a huge difference in the industry. Join us on another journey in the next episode to discover what it takes to fly beyond. Bas. Bas. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. He didn't even hear us. <laughs> How does he know it was good? I know. <laughs>